I'm just going to do another uh, tutorial episode on uh, tweaking lighting. That's what this one's going to be geared towards. Kind of a, a EMB, ELS kind of modding and things like that to make sure that you actually modify the files that you're using to get the appropriate look and, and lighting aspect ratios that you want. And, you know, we're going to try to... I'm gonna try to narrow down, maybe get more in depth about what we're talking about um, per episode. So we got LCPDFR 1.1 in. We got ELS uh, 8.0. Both of these are 8.0 friendly vehicles. Um, you'll find sometimes you can use 7.0 vehicles with uh, 8.0 ELS lighting without an issue. Um, the main thing with ELS um, 8.5 is that sometimes you have to alter the INI file um, a good bit prep that car for use for fluid use in uh, ELS 8.5 which is kind of the main reason I'm sticking with 8.0 um, and, and it's, a, it's a really determining factor because there's a lot of cars out there that are download ready drag and drop and go so um, we also installed a cry 3 EMB series it's a you know lighting graphical kind of modification now that that's in um, you guys can directly edit the files by going into them but I also wanted to show you something else that you can do so now by holding down or pressing the right shift key and the enter button at the exact same time it actually brings up this uh, this EMB kind of series and I wiggled my camera so I could find the cursor you see the little hourglass on its head and from there you can actually go around and you know select certain things you got to be careful because you guys still act a mess um, it doesn't lock orientation of the camera but we'll get some of these limiters and stuff that I really don't want to talk about out of the way and we'll start talking about how to adjust the lighting so first and foremost what I want to cover is um, based off what you have installed and going from there it might not be what it affects so example for um, car headlights if you adjust that it won't really do anything um, the headlights are actually stored under light 3 for some vehicles in the intensity and I'll show you what I'm talking about right here in a second let me go ahead and hop in this vehicle and before you make your adjustments I'll show you how before you make your adjustments remember what variable was in there and go from there so we'll adjust this one you can see it's currently set at 2.0 that's the light intensity and the best thing to do and you're gonna hear the siren and so forth come on a lot during this tutorial but the best thing to do is just bump it up to 100 and look for whatever is having that drastic effect. So it's very apparent that, you know, light 3, light intensity, is in regards to the headlights of the vehicles themselves. And you can see it affected all the cars around me. And, you know, from there you can affect the cone radius and so forth. So we'll go ahead and set that back to 2.0. Killer siren again before it goes too crazy. So one of you was telling me to turn up my headlights, and every episode I kind of do. Um, we're just in a pretty well lit area, so they still look dim, and sometimes the video renders a little bit darker. So they might look good for me while I'm playing the game, and I'll continue to adjust them and check the rendering and afterwards and try to make it. Uh, for example, this started out as a 0.75, and I've been slowly increasing them per episode. You might not think I'm listening to you or forgetting. But I am, and I'm trying to adjust it. But the best thing to do is if you want to figure out what it does. So I remember 0.25 is where that one was. And if I adjust that, I didn't see anything in my local area um, adjust light-wise. So that's a good indicator like, oh, well, I don't know exactly what that does. I might have to find a different area. It could be a helicopter light for all I know. So 0.25. Siren again. That's going to be the, the silent killer of this episode. And if you go down the list and just buy it through experimentation, so this is apparently the street lights, some of the street lights. So we'll bump that back down. And when I say the street lights, I'm talking about this guy right here, this guy right here. You can change the intensity and also change the environment of your game through using that. Now, there's also some interesting factors in terms of what you can do with uh, refraction and how things bounce off the car, and even bloom. So some of you guys really want it to be, you know, somewhat bloomy. And I'll get out of it and get into this vehicle because this vehicle has a prime example. Before we go any further, I'd like to talk about um, how some people make lights that are legitimately exterior in terms of bloom and brightness, and how some aren't. So if we stand behind this vehicle, you can see the Black Jesus uh, vehicle pack off to my right. Those two rear lights, and even the headlight, or the, the top bar lights, those are they're done correctly in my opinion. And this vehicle, um, these are actually like, sometimes they're, even though they're lighting up, the actual emission of light can be behind some type of object where it doesn't emit right. So this is kind of a really good vehicle to show example for bloom on. So say I switch the radius from that, 
to 100, you can instantly see how the bloom effect, you kill that siren, you can see how the bloom effect became kind of more of a, a pushed out crisp area, and it's hard to see kind of the reflection through there until we adjust the second one. Okay, so now that we increase the radius for everything, you can legitimately see it's blinding the shit out of me. It's literally taking up the entire screen. And these two radius numbers, what I often settle on is 20 and 30. Kill our siren again. And you can see I'm getting a pretty healthy bloom from there. It's not overbearing. And, you know, the vehicle itself, the blooms are nice. They're, they're going through a good transitional. I, and, you know, I suggest just going through, because if I showed you each one and we kind of discovered them together, um, you can see how extensively long this this tutorial can go. But I just wanted to sh expose you guys to this, tell you guys you can tinker it. And as I said, based off of the mods that you have, kind of ignore what I got going on in the game, horrible camera angles. But um, based off the mods that you have going and ter certain types of cars and ELS figures and things like that, um, it can change everything. Because Headlight did work before I installed um, ELS. Since I've installed ELS, EMB Cry 3 series, didn't really take that into account and ELS adds a whole smorgasbord of different lighting effects. And sure you can add, you can you can edit these in the INI file, um, sometimes even while the game's running and get away with it. But most of the time it's better just to come in here and use this tool because that's what they meant it for. It's a really nice tool. You can adjust all types of things, even performance related. It even shows your frames per second. And you know, um, mainly because I got everything turned up, you see I'm running around 50 steady. And, you know. Not bad, I guess, for 290. <laughs> so, you know, with that said, just kind of look through here, make your adjustments for that specific vehicle that you're interested in. I suggest using nighttime. Um, you can actually turn down some of the refraction throughout the day, and it'll also kind of reduce the lighting. Now, that's it's very, very dependent on the vehicle you're using as well. You see both of these cars, they're putting out nice red and blue, and, you know, all around they look great. But, you know, if we spawn this guy, and I'll move slightly down the street away just so we can get a better feel for it. Um, completely different vehicle, completely different setup, and we'll go ahead and hit the lights and I'll explain it here. So the blooms, the blooms are really well off on this vehicle. They look really, really good. However, you can also see that, you know, based on this vehicle, the refraction off of the walls and things like that, they're, they're pretty much non-existent. Like, I'm standing right next to a police vehicle that has its lights on. And, you know, nothing's bouncing off of anything. And just to bring a good example, I actually run back here and grab one of the other vehicles. And, I mean, you see, you can see it from way down the street that the light is, you know, pretty decently refracting off of the walls. And it's, it's because how the vehicle was created. So not all vehicles are created equal. And, you know, yeah, that kind of helps, you know. Doing a tutorial and helping make arrests. So we'll kind of bump back down here, and I'll show again. You can see now that the, the lights are actually refracting off the wall, you know, a whole lot better. You can see the pillar, just because it's white in color, it's going to catch that light a little bit better. You know, even across the street, now you're actually starting to see some a little bit of light refraction. Blue's always kind of hard light to reflect, uh, refract, <laughs> tripping over my words. It's a very hard light to render on different surfaces at different lengths because it's just a it's a it's one of those hard colors to get on things. You can see even as we cross the street. So, you know, with that said, sometimes there's only a certain amount of modification and graphical enhancements that you can do to get a specific vehicle looking good. And sometimes you just can't achieve that. And if you can't achieve that with that pack, maybe consider using something else. You know, get get a couple of vehicles that you really like and you know think about applying different skins to them and uh, I'll go over setting up a trainer probably the right way and um, how to use that successfully give you guys the rundown because the trainer is very very extensive in terms of options that you get and I remember when I stepped into using the trainer how you know daunting and unfriendly it felt and we'll go from there in terms of getting your trainer set up using it appropriately the things that you will need the things that you won't need and, you know, hopefully this tutorial helps you guys. Remember, just to bring up the menu, it's the right shift and enter. And then you got to find your hourglass, which can be kind of sneaky at times. So there it is right again, just leaving it on my face. And you can kind of move it around from there and make all your adjustments. When you're done with your adjustments, just don't click. Don't remember. Don't click. Don't remember 
to click save configuration because then you'd have to do it again every time. No, click save configuration and that'll actually write it down to the files. And uh, another good thing to do is to make sure that the entire folder that has Grand Theft Auto in it, that it has read and write access privileges and that you're running the game at an administrative uh, level. Because sometimes you might get denied. It won't crash or anything, but it won't write and save these settings down into the game. So if you pop back in and your settings weren't saved or it looks dookie again, um, we'll go from there. But as for the lighting, I hope, I hope the lighting is good this time because I've been making several adjustments to it. You can see high beam and low beam with them on and off. And we'll see if we get it right. If not, I'll keep tweaking it. And you know, as always, I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll catch y'all at the next one. Thank you.